Good afternoon, my friends. Welcome to the Needle Bug. My name is Karen, and I'd like to welcome each and every one of you to the channel, and thank you for being here to keep me some company today. What I thought I would talk about today is how to start a full coverage piece. I know of some people out there who want to start some full coverages and it's like, where do I start? What do I do? How do I do this? So let's look at that today. Let's look at what do we need to know to be able to start a full coverage and then just how do we start it? So let's get started. First things first, pick a chart. And my best advice to you in picking a chart is pick a chart that you love, that you absolutely love with all your heart because you are going to be working on it for a very long time. And if you don't love it, you're not going to finish it. It's just a given. Just a given. Ask me how I know. There have been charts that I have thought, oh my God, that is just so neat. I really want to stitch that. I really want to stitch it. And I get partway through and it's like, nope, it ain't doing it for me. It just ain't doing it. So find something that in your heart of hearts you love and can live with for a long time because these a lot of full coverage designs are not designs that you're going to finish in a week in a month and maybe not even in a year stitchers retreat took me five years so tuck that in the back somewhere make it a chart that you love once you've picked a chart then you need to gather your floss. And these, these next couple things are not necessarily in any given order, but it's something else that you need to do. Is you need to go through the floss list and you need to gather all your embroidery floss, DMC or whatever it is that you're choosing to use, and organize it in some fashion. A lot of people put it on bobbins. A lot of people use floss away bags. There are more systems out there to organize floss than ever, ever before. I just started doing something new to me that I saw on a recent video and I'm really liking this. So I have them on cards and in bags so that all I need to do is pull the color off and keep on going. It's very easy to find. They're very easy to find. I don't have to hunt through bags. I don't have to hunt through bobbins. This is a wonderful system and if it's something that you're interested in, I did a video on it. Um, just several videos ago and I got the idea from another YouTuber and her channel is called Stitching Masterpieces. Does wonderful work, wonderful work. And she is the source of this, I guess you would call it a system because it's how it's working for me. <laughs> so. That is what I'm using. So you organize that floss because if you just have it willy nilly in a bag or whatever, you're gonna spend more time hunting for the color that you need than you are stitching. So make some, find something that's easy for you to be able to um, get that color that you need and keep on going. Once you have decided that, you also need to decide on your fabric. What what count fabric are you going to work on? What are you able to see? 
And I'm going to say this right up front. Heaven and Earth Designs, all of their charts say 25 count fabric, two strands over one. That is not engraved in gold. Feel very free to use whatever fabric you are comfortable stitching on. If you want to use the recommended Lugana, two strands over one, and you're happy with that, fine, do that. My experience is two strands on 25 count is a bit much. It's a little too thick for me. It gets too bulky. I prefer one strand over one on 25 count Lugana. You can use 28 count. You can use 32 count. You, I know people who have done, who are doing heaven and earth designs on 40 count over one, one strand of floss, but then they're doing 10 stitch. You can go to 20 count, 18 count, 16 count, 14 count, whatever it is that you want to use. Whatever it is that you are comfortable with is what the fabric that you need to use. Because remember, you're going to be stitching this for a very long time. So don't set yourself up for failure by picking a fabric that you are not comfortable with, that you do not enjoy working on. Sometimes that takes a time or two to find the right one. And so be that. Find the one to be happy. Do some test stitching. Get some different count fabrics and test how those stitches look on those on that count. And are you happy with that? Because like I said, it's a long haul project. You're not going to do this project in a week or a month. It may take a year or even years. Um, <clears throat> Once you've decided on your fabric, though, the next big question that people ask is, well, how do I know how big a piece? How do I know? Well, you know by taking the stitch count, whatever that stitch count is, the length and the width, whatever it is, first do ones, first do say the length, Divide that by the count of fabric that you want to use. Okay, so if you have 500 stitches and you're using 20 count fabric, divide that, add six inches. That's going to give you inches. It's going to be 20... 25, I'm, I, I'm not good with math in my head. I have to use a calculator. <laughs> but whatever that comes to, 20 some inches, add another six because you need the margins on each side. Do that for the width, do that for the height. That's going to be the size fabric that you need. That formula is a standard basic formula for how to figure fabric. The other thing you can do is find a fabric calculator somewhere. Yarn Tree, does, Yarn Tree has one. I don't use them, so I really don't, can't tell you all the sites that use them, but in fact, I think Apple even has an app, a fabric calculator app. So if you don't want to do the math, which is just a very basic formula. Stitch count divided by fabric count plus six. That's the math. That's all you need to know to figure your size fabric. Do it for the length, do it for the width. Works every time. If you're using gridded fabric, another thing that you can do to double check yourself. Okay, each block 
each in the grid, each square is 10 stitches by 10 stitches. So if your, fab, if your count is 50 stitches wide, look at your fabric and count 50 blocks across. Is it gonna fit? Sure. Do you have some left on each side? Okay, you're good to go. Do the same thing for the length. If it's 700 stitches high, then count 70 blocks. That's going to give you 700 stitches. Just count your blocks on your fabric. It's as simple as that. So do the math. Count your blocks. If all is well, then you are good to go. But do pick a fabric that you are going to be comfortable working on for a very long time. After you've done all of those, then you need to think about how, what am I going to use to stitch this? Am I going to put it in a hoop? Am I going to put it in a Q-snap? Am I going to put it on a scroll frame? Am I going to stitch in hand? All of which are perfectly legitimate to do. You can do any, again, stitch the way you are comfortable with. Some people prefer scroll frames and only scroll frames, and that's all they will ever use. Some people are total Q-snap people. Some people are hoops. And I have known people that have stitched a heaven and earth design in a hoop start to finish. And that is perfectly fine stitch how you were comfortable. There are no cross stitch police out there. And the only person you have to keep happy is yourself. So do what works for you, but decide what you are going to do. And again, if you're going to use a scroll frame, all fine, well and dandy. Do you need a stand of some sort to put that on? Again, there are many stands, kinds of stands out there got to find what works for you. All that being said, we're almost ready to start. Almost. You got one more thing to decide before you put needle to thread or thread your needle and needle to fabric. And speaking of which, oh goody, I have thread here. I can take a needle. I didn't bring a needle to start what we're going to start. <laughs> But I think I have a needle on thread. I'm pretty sure I do. Yeah. So let me grab that. That would be a heck of a fix if I go to start a project here and show you how to start and I didn't have a needle. Who'd thunk? Let me get this one. Okay. So the last thing you want to think about before you put needle and thread to fabric is what method am I going to use to stitch this? Lord only knows there are many, many ways to stitch a full coverage. I am not going to give any big long explanation for any way because that would take forever. <laughs> You can look them. There are plenty of videos on YouTube as far as the different methods. You can do cross country where you pick a color, you stitch it until say maybe your length of thread runs out or your symbol, that particular symbol runs out or you pick an area, a small area that you're going to work in and complete that area before you move to the next one. And you're going to stitch by color in that area. So you're stitching cross country within a confined space by color. And that's one way to do it. You can stitch ex extreme cross country where you pick 
a color and you stitch that color throughout the whole chart. So if the chart is 30 pages, you go through every page and you stitch that color until you have all of them, all the symbols on those 30 pages stitched. That's extreme cross country. Extreme meaning the whole chart. <laughs> You can stitch in columns. So you could start at your top right hand corner or well, you can start in any corner. You can start in the middle or wherever you want to start. My normal is to more than likely start in the upper left hand corner, either that or the lower right hand corner. But I could stitch 10 stitches wide down the whole height of the chart and continue across the chart in that manner. Every column, which is 10 stitches wide, and stitch down that column. Or I could stitch royal rows. And that's another method that utilizes columns. And you, okay, Allison, you correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm probably not gonna get this right, but you stitch 10, either 10 or 20 stitches wide by 20 stitches high. And you complete, you stitch by color within that area, and then you park your thread in the next area. Which also reminds me that's something else you decide. Am I going to stitch by color and Complete, complete a color? Am I going to stitch and park my threads? Am I going to stitch in one 10 by 10 block and park that thread in the next 10 by 10 block so I can pick it up again? It is another option. That's what Royal Rose does. It stitches that color in the block, parks it in the next block where it's going to be used again and continues to work that way across the whole two row two 20 stitches down by the whole width of the chart. Then they come back here and they start over again and do the same thing and they work their way down the chart. I personally have not really done that method. I have tried all the others. Then there is diagonal stitching, <laughs> which kind of has my name on. I mean, I have done a lot of videos with diagonal stitching. I saw Brian Blitz Stitch, and I liked his idea. I liked his thought on stitching diagonally. What I did not like and could not wrap my head around was stitching my row vertically because I like to stitch horizontally. So I took his method but adapted it for me and then did a lot of videos on that. And it seems between Brian's videos and my videos that's when diagonal stitching kind of took off, that a lot of people started picking up doing it. People have, many people out there have altered the way to their way of doing it, which is fabulous. When I started, I stitched Within the 10 block, I stitched across the first row in the 10 block, then the second row, then the third, and I kind of zigzagged down each, well, diagonal, and I zigzagged down the whole diagonal, going one row of stitches at a time. There are people that now pick a color and stitch that color down the length of the diagonal. 
there are people that will pick a color and stitch one length of thread until it runs out, then go back and get the next color and do the same thing. So there's many, many, many ways of, of doing it. And there are many people at this point who have made videos on stitching diagonally. So again, if you're searching for a method to stitch, just search YouTube. There are tons and tons of videos out there that demonstrate the different methods. Like for me to go into each one of those, this video would take forever. <laughs> forever. So what I'm going to do is show you how I originally did it. Again, I have altered some things with that too. But in all honesty, I tend to revert back to the way I had done it initially. So that's what I'm going to show you today. One other thing about methods. You may pick a method to start, and you may not like it. Not everybody likes every manner in which a piece is stitched. Don't feel like, oh, I picked this, now I'm stuck completing this whole design in this method, and I really don't like doing it, and I really hate it and I'm not gonna finish the piece because of it. That's not a place we're going to go. Where we're going to go is try another method. It is okay to mix methods within the same piece because by looking at the front, you cannot tell. The only way you will know that you try different ways of stitching is by looking at the back. You can't see it on the front. You can see it on the back. My Stitcher's Retreat has every method, just about every method that was being used at the time on there. And if you flip, well, you can't because it's framed now, but if you would look at the back, you can see exactly where I did diagonal. You can see where I did columns. You can see where I stitched cross country. It, the back of your work tells a story in itself. But there's no need to start another piece or to not stitch a piece because you don't like the method. You just change it. Just do something different. It's okay to do that on the piece that you're working on. It's not a problem. So go ahead. If you're stitching diagonal and you're stitching row by row, stitch by stitch on the diagonal, and you're going, oh God, this is slow. I can't do this anymore. And you want to stitch down the column just by color, do it. You want to try royal rows, do it. You want to go cross country, Good. You want to switch back? Well, then just put your diagonal lines in again and fill in the blanks that were left by whatever other method that you stitched. Fill in the blanks, get back to your diagonal, and move merrily along. Simple as that. Simple as that. So those are some things you need to think about. The other thing don't forget to have is needle and scissors. And if you need a needle threader, a needle threader would be fine also. Okay, so with that, let's look at putting some thread in our needle and doing a little bit of stitching. So let me switch you over here to my other Okay, let me switch my camera. Okay. All right. 
this won't let me use the <laughs> for some reason my software is being a little weird and it won't let me use my camera oh now why is it not even letting me use my camera hello oh i guess i have to select it that would be a good idea wouldn't it be there we go there we go okay so now we are here with a scroll frame with our fabric on it ready to start frame okay where did i put my template hold on And we're not starting Fred, we're starting Adams. Oh. We're starting Adams stocking. Because if you watched my video earlier today, I said I'm taking a break from Fred today because my needle was too hot to touch because <laughs> I stitched so much. So we're going to start. I have to come up with a name for this one. Oh, I don't want to do it in that. I want to do it in pattern key. So I'll show you the picture first. This is called Snowman and it's by Ruth Sanderson and it is no longer available on Heaven and Earth because Ruth Sanderson is not with them anymore. So, sorry for that little bit of glare. This is what we're starting today. And I am going to start up here in that, whoops, in that corner. And I'm going to stitch diagonally. And I'm going to start out row by row. I will tell you <laughs> this is going to be an easy one to start because that top part is all blue lots and lots and lots of blue now I'm not going to put the chart up on the screen just on account of I don't really have room to show you but I am going to I do that. Um, I hate when they do that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, I'm going to do a cheat. Because in the first row, the first five stitches. are three different colors. They are used in the first five stitches of this first block. And as far as I can see on my screen, they're not used again. And they are in the very first row, right at the edge. Therefore, I am going to cheat and I am going to fill them in with the first color that has more stitches than just one or two because 
the likelihood when I put this stocking together that that first row may be included in the seam or may be covered by a trim. Not worth the grief and aggravation. So, in all honesty, yes, I cheat. <laughs> so I'm going to switch and make my first color 798, which is here. And I'm just going to pull one out. And they've got all curly cued. In case you don't know, if you get all curly like that, if you wrap it around your first finger and wrap the other end around your first finger and just go like this a couple times, the curly goes away. <laughs> I do that because if it's too curly, then my thread will tend to want to knot. Now I'm going to stitch this on 20 count easy guide. Okay. I'm going to start my thread. I'm going to start right here. Okay. So one, two, I'm going to do six stitches of this color. So I start my threads a little bit different than some. So I'm actually gonna go down in the top. Well, first of all, I have to get to the right, be in the right. Um, I'm gonna go down in my top right corner Let's see if I can scooch it in a little bit more. There. Okay. I'm going to come up in the middle of that square. Or as close to the middle as I can get it. Now here's another decision you need to make. Actually, I no, I'm up a one too high. Another decision, now on 20 count it doesn't matter because your gray lines go between the 10 by 10 blocks. On your 25 count, your gray line would be either the first stitch or the last stitch, whichever you choose of that 10. It can be stitch, it can be stitch number one or it can be stitch number 10. I'm going to tell you, make a decision and do not change from that decision within this piece or within any other piece that you stitch. If that gray line is going to be stitch number one, both horizontally and vertically, it is forevermore and always stitch number one on the piece you're starting and on every piece thereafter. Because if you try and switch it up, you're going to mess with your head. <laughs> I've done that too. So I went down in the corner, come up in the middle, and then I am going to go down in the middle of that space between the stitches. Okay. So what I did is I made just a teeny, teeny little tacking stitch. And I'm going to pull this thread through until there's just a teeny, teeny little bit of it showing. Okay. And now I'm going to come up and do my X. So I'm going to come up in the lower left. I'm going to go down in that upper right. And see what I mean about thread knotting? 
There we go. I'm going to come up in the, well, I, I am assuming with this that you people know how to cross stitch. Okay, so I'm going to do six stitches. And I have this attached to my desk and starting up here at the top, my hand says, I want to keep hitting this desk every time you pull this needle through. Okay, so there's two. This is the other thing you need to decide. Are you going to do one stitch at a time? Or are you going to go across the six and come back? I personally prefer one stitch at a time. But again, you do what works for you. This is four. and six. If you have not done parking or if you get confused by parking, I do have a video on that also that I can link. It's called Demystifying Parking. Okay, so now one, two, three, four, five, and one more is six. You know what? This first block is only nine. Look at that. I have to frog right away. Maybe we'll just cut this part out. <laughs> and I'll restart it. I'll cut the ripping out, the frogging out. Now, there are several ways that you can start your threads. Just an FYI on that. So you start your thread however you are comfortable with it. You don't necessarily have to use this method I'm using. And the reason, the only reason I'm using it is because it tentatively causes less bulk on your back. Okay. I should have picked that up on the chart, but I did not. So this first block is only nine stitches. So I'm going to start over one and do that same. Come up in the middle. Or as close as you can. Go down. Well, it looks like I came up on the side, so I'm just going to reverse that. Came up on the side, go down in the middle. So the big thing is just make a little tacking stitch there, sort of. Then come up in my starting corner. And that's the other thing. You always, always, always want to use the same corner to start because that is how you're going to park your thread. So that you know when you get to that park thread exactly where that stitch belongs, that color belongs. So again, that's another thing that you need to be very, very consistent with. Three. I need to do six. Five. And then one more. 
more. This is number six. The other thing is use your other hand to guide that thread or keep a be able to feel that thread so that if you're going to catch a knot, you're going to catch it right away. Okay, so there's six. So my next instant, my next occurrence of this color is over on this side. The second stitch in and it's down one, two, three rows. So I'm going to bring this thread up in the lower left hand corner, three rows down, one, two, three rows down from that second stitch. And I'm going to take my needle off and I'm going to let it hang. I'm going to mark that stitch on my pattern. And I want to set up my shortcuts. I thought I had done that, but apparently I didn't. Well, I did. Why isn't that doing it? Okay. And because you got to remember to put your, <laughs> choose the right icon at the top. So I'm going to mark that and park it. I'll show you in a second what I did. So I stitched these six stitches and marked them, and that is where I left the thread. Now I'm going to do these stitches. I'll complete, I'll show you, let's do this. I'm going to stitch these, I'm going to do these, I'm going to do these, and then I'm going to park it. No, I'm even going to do those. And then I'm going to park it there. And why am I going to park it there? Because those three stitches will not be stitched at that time. Okay, and I'm just going to be zigzagging down. I didn't put my diagonal line in either, did I? Oh. There we go. So I actually stitched a few too many. And I'm going to do that again. Well, no, I won't. I won't stitch this one. I'll come down my diagonal line. And I'll stitch what I have highlighted there. And then I'll do these, these three and park it here and then finish, finish them out. So with that, we need seven, nine, seven. The other thing you can do if your thread is all curly like that is just keep a damp sponge and just lightly pass the thread over the damp sponge and that will straighten it out. So I'm going to do the same thing. 
Another way to start your thread is go a few stitches away. Come up at your start point. Don't pull the tail all the way through and stitch over it in this manner. So I am going to do this because my hand keeps hitting the desk underneath there. So that's one. Two. So I'm stitching over that thread. Three. No, that was two. So now I'm going to pull that to the back. And I'm going to do this last stitch here. And then, like I showed you, I'm going to drop down and go in one because this is where my diagonal goes. And I'm going to do these three. And I overshot my, there we go. And then I'm going to skip three stitches. Now here's another choice you would have. If you wanted to, you could skip three, but this park this thread there, here, go back, get the next color, do these three stitches, park that where it belongs, and then go back and do these. You could actually go not only line by line, but stitch by stitch. I prefer to just complete the color in the row because it just means just a little bit less threading of a needle, changing threads. You also have the option to let your needle on the thread or take it off like I do. I choose to just work with one needle. Okay, so I can do these two stitches yet. Next one is going to go right here, but I want to complete those two stitches above it. So I already have it marked. I'm going to just let that hang there. I'm going to Get my next color, which is 825. I just got done doing all kinds of blue on Fred, and what do I do? I start with all kinds of blue. <laughs> So 
So now I start this thread the same way. I'm going to go down here. I'm going to come up in the middle or as close to the middle as I can get. It's always very hard to find that. There we go. And then I'm going to go down on the side. I'm going to pull that till there's just a little smidgen like that. And then I am going to complete this X. And if it leaves a little fuzzy on the top, that's when you get your handy dandy snag nab it out <clears throat> and pull that little fuzz to the back. Okay. Having a hard this it's an angle thing. I'm having a hard time seeing if I'm at the right hole. There we go. Okay, so I've done now these three are completed. So I want to put this at the place that this color is used the next time, which is right here. So that is how you get started. If you have four, if you have more colors in that first row, you start all the threads and park it where it's needed. Yep. You're busy. Mm -hmm. I'm almost done. You made a mistake. I did. Oh, okay. Got the chance. Oh, for God's sake. Okay. So that is how you start a full coverage. And now I think we will stop at that and I will continue to do some more videos working on, I'm going to call this one blue, I think. So with that, my friends, we will call it a day. If you have questions, be sure to let me know and I will try and answer them as I can. So until we meet again, have a great rest of your day, a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye for now.